So my parents were living in Johannesburg when I was born um, and they often told us about how my father was renting a, a back room near a coal yard and when they would rise in the morning they would have soot coming from their nostrils and so when it was time for me to be born a relative of theirs uh, who was living in a proper house um, in deep loof Soweto um, insisted that my mom must live there so that this baby doesn't grow up um, in, in a coal yard. So I ended up being born at Deep Loof Clinic in, 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 in Soweto. Uh, but soon after that, my family moved back to Pretoria, which is where my dad was from. And um, so I grew up in Soshanguve. Um, and that's where we lived until I was a teenager. Uh, and then we moved to, to Johannesburg when I was a teenager. Um, so I've lived in Pretoria mostly and a bit in Johannesburg. I went to school in Pretoria, uh, in Soshanguve, which is where we're from. Um, so my primary schooling was mostly done at a township school in, in Soshanguve. And um, I then moved to St. Andrew's School for Girls, and that's where I was from grade six uh, up until matric. Well, right now, I'm most proud of being appointed the Auditor General of South Africa. Um, it's, uh, it's an immense honor, um, a tremendous privilege for me to be able to serve this country in this way. Uh, before then, I was serving as the Deputy Auditor General. Um, also, like I am now, I was the first female Deputy Auditor General to hold that position. Um, and I'm proud that I I've been able to maintain a tradition um, of, of Deputy Auditors General transitioning into the Auditor General role. Uh, I look forward to, to serving, as I've said, and I look forward to building on the legacy left by the Auditors General that have come before me. I think it's a well accepted fact of our lives now, still, that women don't enjoy the assumption of competence. Um, the credit that comes for their work uh, is often less than what is accorded to males and their mistakes are often more amplified than that of their male counterparts. So yes, one has to accept that those of us who have the opportunity to drive change um, have to work that much harder. Um, accepting that we'll get less credit for our work, accepting that um, whatever gains we make, we would have had to work at um, much harder. And it remains my hope that the next generation of women will have it a little bit easier. In many ways, I have it a bit easier than the generation of women before me. And I, I believe that if I do well, the next generation of women leaders um, would have a lesser time of it, lesser hard time of it.